a little Bow Wow CD. But that's like, you know, it's, it's, that's yeah. before punk. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm from Bakersfield. I don't know what, do you know anything about Bakersfield, California? Uh, like, very little. There's usually one thing people know, and that's because it's the city where Corn is from. Oh, okay. So that was my, my first CD was a Corn CD. So oh, that's, so. I just met Brian Head Welch. I work <laughs> at a venue uh, in Pittsburgh and just met his other band, uh, Love and Death. It's weird because I don't really like them now, but, um, he used to DJ weddings and he took me to a wedding once I would always ride with him and it was awful. Um, and he had like a separate board and I think he tried to like freak me out and was like, you know, cause I was always looking for like heavier music and he was like, you know, you're going to hate this. And he like gave me these big headphones and I like put them on and he just blasted Metallica. And uh, I don't really like Metallica, but I thought it was really sick at the time, yeah. so. Was that like Black Album Metallica? Yeah, yeah. Crazy story, my uh, mom took me to this um, family to get babysat, and in the future, her their son ended up recording our first record, and their daughter uh, tattoos Cassie and I now in Pittsburgh and um, their daughter gave their brother um, who then gave me a cassette it was called like the it was just like an eerie hardcore compilation um, and it had uh, bands like Disciple AD on it and I think Brothers Keeper was on it and just kind of like all of the bigger hardcore bands hardcore punk bands from Erie so that was like the first thing I really latched on to cool. I went to my first my first concert ever was Godsmack um, but it was at this huge arena and um, there were I think three bands that played and we were sitting like way high up and the first band was playing and these guys it was just me and my mom she took me and these guys behind us were like slamming their like glasses of beer and they were like you know spilling onto our heads and then uh, the first band finished and my mom and I were like wow you know that was a really short show and and like that didn't sound like Godsmack but I guess it's over <laughs> and we just left. And that was it. <laughs> Do you remember who that first band was? Oh man, I think or they were called like, like like Lawnmower Head or something. And Saliva played too, but we missed them. So Wait, how long did it take you to realize that you left before? Oh, like years later. Like like there's probably like a two year gap. I was like thirteen at that point and there was like a two year gap and then I started going to like shows and I was like I think that I miss Godsmack, you know? <laughs> I mean, I guess that's cool, so. We, yeah, we, we had a venue um, that's since been closed down in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania, called The Hangout. And um, the first show I ever went to, I was like 14 or 15. Um, and it was a band called Disciple AD and a touring band called Suffer Hereafter played. And um, it was like my parents dropped like me and like four of our friends off. And when, uh, we thought it was just like crazy. And we like cut right up into the front and we're just like headbanging on the stage and had like, I don't know, like Hurley shirts on. And I don't know, every, you know, everyone was like there for uh, like the show. And we were just totally sticking out like a sore thumb. But it was awesome. Everyone was really cool. So. I was in a really bad metal band and uh, we did, never had a bass player the entire, like, we were like a band for like, you know, it was like our high school band, so like five years and uh, yeah, we just never had a bass player and we were just really awful, but um, we, we saved all this money for probably like three years. We had, I think it was like, like $900 and we bought, we found this van on the side of the road and it was the worst van you've ever seen. It was so dirty and the guy wanted like, like 900 exactly for it. And we bought this van and uh, we were like, yeah, we're going to tour. Like one of the people in the band had a license. So we were like, we're going to go tour. And we like bought the van 
and we like spent we, we painted it like stenciled the name on the side and then um we went to our parents and we were like look like we're booking this tour like we're going we had like one show in indiana booked and uh they were like you know no you're not like maybe next year like if we come with you we could do like three days so we uh jumped the van off a hill and when we landed the seat the passenger seat was so rusted that when we landed it just ripped out of the floor and just like it was awful and then like years later my friend found it in a junkyard and that's and like how old were you guys when you so if one, <laughs> one of you have a license yeah i was like 15 um and most of us are 15 and then one guy was, was 16. Like summer between like your sophomore junior year so yeah like, yeah it was awful <laughs> The first tour I did was a month long. It was with a different band. I did it when I was <clears throat> 17. Um, and it was, I think just because it was our first tour, it was like the most amazing thing ever. We uh, seriously just like camped in Walmart parking lots. Like every single night, we would just lay our sleeping bags out in the grass and just sleep there. Um, and it was awesome it was like some of the most fun I've ever had just like sleeping on the grass and uh, we never got bothered or anything I think the shows were all just awful but you know it was like the first tour so um there's like a lot of crazy stuff that happened um our friend Eli like uh was with us and he uh didn't change like the entire tour you know we thought that was like really funny and he just had like Italian dressing that he spilled all over his white shirt and it was it was gross <laughs> um but yeah just stuff like that fun tour stuff we've gotten stopped well we've only gotten searched once um and it didn't really take that long to get in they just kind of went through our stuff and you know made sure we didn't have anything that we said we didn't um, we're going to Tijuana today though, um, and I, I don't know what to expect, like, um, you hear, like, that people will have the promoter meet you in, like, San Diego, and then you drive to the border and then, like, walk over, or, so I don't know, we'll see what happens. Alright. I went to this record store called Brave New World in Pittsburgh, and it was like, I don't know, it was like punk, and they had, like, a reggae section it was like i don't know it was a cool record store and i was just like searching around and i found this live germs record and i didn't really listen to the germs but it looked punk as fuck and i was like yeah so i picked it up and yeah i listened to it quite a bit i'm like the youngest of four so like by the time i was like you know growing up my parents were like a little older they're not super old but like a little older and my like we grew up in like a christian home that wasn't super music oriented so my mom's favorite like music thing is like michael bolton and i didn't really latch on to michael bolton but i could sing you everything yeah i yeah. had that same thing there's this random country singer named john barry yeah my mom loved him and like never listened to him on my own mm -hmm. can sing literally anything yeah. like yeah yeah i know when like he's doing covers i can like hit anything when it yeah, comes yeah. on the radio it's sick nice so, good talent to have i guess yeah so, i mean so, thanks mom <laughs> yeah thanks Deb. So I was the youngest of four. I had a sister who was like really into like punkish stuff, like Newfound Glory and like all those bands. And she like worked at our like local venue, just like serving food and stuff. So I was at like countless shows with her that like are all interchangeable. Literally could have been like any ska band or any like yeah. weird suburban pop Probably punk band. Like a exchange of two or three local bands that would play <laughs> yeah. every show. Yeah, exactly. So. I don't really remember specifics, but like my parents always just like would take us to this weird suburban venue where there's all these like, you know, like goth kids in parachute pants, like hanging out and just like drop us off and be like, all right, see you later. So they like didn't really take us to very many shows to like hang out and be at, but they would drop us off everywhere. I went to like Warp Tour in 2003 that they dropped me off and got like kicked in the head during Good Charlotte. It was hard, um, hard pit. <laughs> um, but yeah, nothing, nothing like that they really hung out at. I remember, I don't remember my first one, but I remember like at that local venue, like stage diving for probably this band called Distorted Penguins, who were like this ska band, like the shit ska band, you know? And I'm like 
I did a stage dive and it's like pretty insane jumping onto a bunch of people. And this one guy like grabbed my like hood and tried to like pull me down like by my hood. It was, it was a mess. I didn't stage dive much after that. <laughs> One that I like that was my own and not my sister's that I really started following was actually um, there was two two split offs of the band Osrotten. There was Costa Christ and Behind Enemy Lines, and like they had an interchangeable guitar player, and like they're just like one was the metal influence and one was like the punk hardcore influence. And literally, Costa Christ played like three times a week, and I was at every show doing like circle pitting and like yeah. singing along at everyone. Um, sure. Generalities are fine. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll tell you a little bit. It was a street punk band. Um, I played drums in it. Um, I remember we were like notorious for like being this like fucked up street punk band that always played with metalcore bands. Like, cause we just grew up in a suburb and had a bunch of metalcore friends, so we would like show up and definitely be like the odd people out and like the ones who were like outside being like idiots and like I don't know being loud. Um, and like, I remember almost getting into fights with like hardcore kids in this like scene in Altoona, like the singer of my band, like someone tried to like spin kick him or something. And he like caught his foot and was like, meant to like say this while the band was playing, but the band just ended and he was like, I'm going to rip your fucking head off. And then like all of like this other, like Altoona, this like hardcore scene, like just like turned around and like, it was almost this like huge yeah. thing, like four punks versus like 20 of these like nice. bro dudes. Yeah. It was in that band that we're not going to mention. It was a street punk band. Um, our, we played this like weird, like we played with a ska band. We played with a band called Dollface Divine. Um, they were like, I don't know, they were poppy, but they were also like dark and wore makeup and stuff. Um, and I remember like we played last. We had like a bunch of friends. I don't even know how we got on that show. And our first song was called Ska is Dead. Funny, we played with a ska band. And like this old punk that we knew was at the show. And I remember him telling me like after we played that we went into the first song and ska kids were running out of the venue, one of them bleeding, like covering their ears because like our friends were just acting like idiots yeah. and just went crazy. Nice. <laughs> My first tour, like they were good. Like, I don't know. By the time I started touring, I was in decent bands or like, you know, we're doing at least decent yeah. tours. So I just remember we went on tour. I was in this band called Blood Vessels to Wires. It was like a crust punk band. And we went on the tour with this band, Man the Conveyors. And I was like 18 and they were all like, you know, older, like at the time, probably like 24 or 25. And I was like the young straight edge kid who like kind of got picked on. And I just remember like every show was a fucking wild party like insane like in detroit i remember like this is my like memory every time i go to detroit is we playing this like crazy house show the first band is completely naked playing and then like by the end of it there are like kids pissing on other kids that are like passed out and it's just like fuck so we like went to sleep in the van that yeah. night yeah yeah that like the first tour was all just shows like that nice. sleeping in like other people's vomit and dumb stuff like that I just remember the the borders going into England are hard. They like they really want to make sure that you're spending money and like really like they're just asking you all kinds of questions and we're all like really sweating it because we're trying to sneak across like not as a band like as just college buddies and it's like if he would have asked one more question I think our like good friend Tanner would have broke and like it would have been a total mess. So just sweating a lot of sweat crossing the borders. It was Brave New World for sure, that one I mentioned earlier. And there was like the dude who sang in that band, Costa Christ, worked there at the time. And um, I remember just like going and finding whatever record looked like something that I would be into and just like buying it. Yeah. And also like bands would play there all the time. So it was like the spot and it yeah. was in College Town and there's this place called The O, which is like a Pittsburgh legend spot where you like go get O fries and it's just like a bag of like grease and you go sit on this wall and just eat fries and that's where like all the punks would hang out from nice. like 2004 to 2006 or seven. Awesome. Yeah, it was sick. Right. But Brave New World, that's the one. Awesome. Well, my dad was, had always played in bands and uh, was always in metal bands and was like in punk bands and stuff too. So the first record he gave me was uh, Nirvana, Nevermind. 
So that was like the first time I started really getting into alternative music was when he gave me that record. I was like super into like Marilyn Manson and like all that kind of stuff growing up. And then when I started going to shows, I was mainly just into to the local bands, really. Well, most of the concerts I went to growing up was with my dad. My dad took me to like every concert. Um, he took me to every Ozfest and like all kinds of stuff. I've probably seen Iron Maiden like six times um, with him, which was awesome. But the first concert he took me to was Stone Temple Pilots. And I was bummed because a few weeks later was a Marilyn Manson concert that I really wanted to go to. And dad was like, well, I'm not gonna take you to that. Cause I think I was 15 something like that yeah. he was like no I'm not taking you that I'll take you I'll take you and your girlfriends to see Stone Temple Pilots <laughs> and I was like but dad I want to go see Marilyn Manson yeah. but uh I think he took me like a few years after I think I was like 17 he took me to see Marilyn Manson but when I was like 14 or 15 he was like no way <laughs> yeah um I grew up in a town um called Erie, Pennsylvania. I live in Pittsburgh now, but um, so it's about two hours north. And uh, it had a pretty thriving hardcore scene in like the late 90s, which is what, when I grew up. Um, and so one of the first concerts I went to was a Brothers Keeper concert or show, I guess it would be a show. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it like totally changed my life because I was just hanging out at the mall one day, some kid gave me a flyer. He was like, you should go to this show. It sounds just like that. I think I was probably wearing a Marilyn Manson shirt. He was like, you should check this out. And I was like, okay. And I went and I, it was awesome. I, and my parents actually went with me to my first show because they were like, I don't know what this is gonna be like. And then they saw that it was like totally cool and was like a safe space. And then I could go there all the time. I was probably at shows like every weekend after that. Nice. Yeah, definitely Brothers Keeper, which um, is cool because my friend Dan and I, we grew up together and uh, played in a cover band when we were like super young. But just recently, we um, did this cover song for a compilation for an eerie hardcore documentary where we like redid a Brothers Keeper song. And so um, I think it's online somewhere, but uh, in um it's 4.0 in egomania and and dan like reinvented the song he plays bass in between the barrier to me now so he like redid re totally reinvented the song like the guitar and drums all that kind of stuff and our friend aj plays in this band path to misery all three of us grew up together so we did this remake of this cover and then i did the vocals for it which was pretty cool well the first band was that cover band with dan and um, we just like would do any kind of like random covers that w like bands that we were into. Um, I think I was in eighth grade and Dan was in seventh grade when we started that band. And then after that in high school, I like was in this more like uh, goth metal band called Zabalba, which there's a new Zabalba. <laughs> And there's multiple Zabalba's. Yeah. A, a Mexican band, like from Mexico, called Zabalba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was my yeah. my first band. I must have been 16. I sang for that band. Nice. Yeah. Uh, what was the first band that you kind of played bass or guitar or anything? Um, the cover band with Dan. Okay. Um, it was called Ground Zero, and uh, we played like our local schools, you know, talent show yeah. and like you know stuff like that. That was pretty fun. Do you remember the first show from that cover band, the first show you played? Yeah, it was definitely that talent, like a talent show at our school, which I think Dan and I helped organize for something. I think just because we wanted to have a talent show because our school so didn't have play. one. Yeah, so we could play it, yeah. So that was pretty cool. And then um, after that, when uh, Zabalba started playing shows, um, my dad actually, like, would book our shows for us and he would like bring in these like other weird bands from other cities and stuff and actually like book entire shows for for us to play because my band was a little bit different than the hardcore yeah. scene that we were like growing up in 
So it didn't really fit on those types of shows, but, and my dad's band would play too, so, which was really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Being on tour, I was a bit older. Um, I had graduated college and was like, my teacher was like, what are you gonna do with yourself? And I was like, I'm gonna start a band. And um, <laughs> so like a year later, uh, Anthony and I had started the band and we were like, we're gonna go on tour. And uh, I just remember just every day just being like an awesome adventure. And I don't know if I have any like specific memories. I just remember it just being life changing. Yeah. And something that you want to do actually, all the yeah, time. Yeah. yeah. As much as possible. Um, growing up, our, my friend Eric, uh, who was in Brothers Keeper, um, he ran. I think it was a record label too called Surprise Attack. And then he had a record store and then the record store was part of a tattoo shop. So the record store was in the front and the tattoo shop was in the back. So one of my like first jobs, Eric hired me on to like work in the record store, which was basically just like hang out at the desk and sell records. But they had just opened, so he really didn't have the money to pay me. So instead of getting paid, I would just get free tattoos, which was pretty <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And I must have been, maybe, I might have been only been 17, maybe close to turning 18, but uh, it was it was pretty awesome. Do you remember your first tattoo, or which one? Yeah. Is it something that <clears throat> you're not too happy with now? Or is it oh, no, I love my first yeah. tattoo. Um, it's on my back, so you can't really see it, but, and I was definitely 17, and my mom definitely had to sign for it, and I definitely got it there for free for working. Yeah. Um, it's a straight edge tattoo on my back. It's just like, you know, X's and that kind of thing. So yeah, I'm still straight edge, still believe it, so. It was, I mean, I could tell you like my first like cool record, the one that it like stands out, like my first record. Well, the the non-cool ones are, are, the, are cool. finer. Uh, then then I, the next one is first hard, punk hardcore record. Okay, so. fair enough. Um, I will probably say legitimately, like my family, like I grew up in a musical family, so weird. My, I mean, my dad's a musician. He like, you know, whatever, took us through his shows and whatnot. But it was probably like Disney sing-along tunes, I'm sure, like, because we were really into them as kids. Like, I mean, I knew pretty much all the words to most of them. And I, I remember the one was like, the, it was like the Goofy movie sing-along tune. So it's definitely probably what it was. What, what was that song? The song at the end is that the one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like oh, I don't remember. Power or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a Michael Jackson sort yeah. of like you know rip, rip off. Sure. Yeah. First yeah. punk hardcore record. I literally bought almost the entire Pennywise discography. Like I still remember like going to the record store. It was like Waves Music was the one, which was like an offshoot of like National Record Mart or whatever, and. I literally probably bought every CD that they that I could get my hands on. So I'd say that's probably like my first like you know relatively cool. You should record. probably tell Joey that because Joey loves. Does he really? Yeah. That rules. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, for sure, it was like my dad. Like we grew up going to his shows. He played like folk music, and I mean, I was I mean I was probably a baby going yeah. to his shows because he used to tour like on the weekends. And then he would go to school like whenever I was like a really little kid, so it was definitely like one of his, for sure. So it was probably like, it was definitely like a warp tour. I remember like I went with like my friends' older sisters, and they were like probably 19 or 20 at the time, and I was probably like 12 or 13. And I remember like vividly them like being completely intoxicated and me being terrified to like get in the, cause I was like a responsible kid aside from yeah. like this situation. But yeah. I mean, Bad Religion was definitely like my, the band that I was going to see at the time for sure. Absolutely. At the time, like the Berlin Project was a big band in Pittsburgh and they kind of like branched out there and they're just like a punk band from the area and I was like super into them. When I was, that was like the first like probably local band I was really into. Um, I played in like an indie rock band with my friends who coincidentally I like ceased to speak to like not shortly after. We played like a few shows and it just was like a disaster. So yeah. Do you remember the first show that you played? Yeah, we played at a CD warehouse, which is, and it was like a great venue. Like it was, a, and the show was like packed. We played this band called the, uh, the Rookie, 
It was, and they were a great local band too. Like they were all older. They were definitely like in their twenties, and we were like you know fourteen or fifteen, and um, we played at the CD warehouse, and it was dope. But like the band was just a disaster. Yeah, so didn't last long. no, not at all. I mean, I, I was literally like 60 pounds most of high school, so I was not, I mean, I, I grew up going to punk shows, like yeah. our local venue, the Ms. Robota Project is like known for like yeah. a, a long history of great shows, and like, I was kind of like stayed out of the way because I would have got murdered, yeah. so. No, I don't really have one. Do <laughs> yeah, 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 like there were Waves Music, my cousin actually worked there, so she used to get like CDs and tapes at like a discount. So like I still remember like I used to like give her this like big list as soon as I got all like my like grass cutting money right. saved up I would go just like hit my cousin Christy up She's like hey I want this 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 and I remember like I got the Pennywise stuff from her she like get it like half off so that's why I bought like everything yeah. I get my hands on so nice. um well I got a crazy story one time one time so I like lived in South America for a while I lived in Argentina in Buenos Aires and so I was like I used to play shows when I was down there. Like I moved there basically to move there or whatever. But um, long story short, like they do this thing called testigos, which is where they take you f to be like a witness for like a crime scene. So I was like, you know, completely a foreigner. They like take yeah. me into like this, like there's the barrios that are bad. They call them like the vichas. And like the vichas there, like they took me in this like crazy neighborhood of just like tin roofs and dirt floors and like, so, and everyone shows up and they like hand me a bulletproof vest and like, you need to like, remember everything you see and I'm like six months in the country like speak decent Spanish but not enough to really know what the hell I was doing yeah and you're still like thinking thinking it through right oh and absolutely like, yeah. yeah yeah and like so they get me in here and there's, there's these like six kids on the ground with handcuffs and like they're pulling all these like gold watches and like stolen cell phones and like there's these guys with these like big m16s and like I have to report like what's going on I have no idea what I'm doing because and they like throw me in the back of a police car without even explaining it was like terrifying so like and I was like I was down there like playing and it was crazy